I'm the most concerned that we are going to lose opportunities to use technology for good as citizens, and that public policies will be passed that will actually thwart that. This book is really about an overlooked set of technologies, some of them new and some of them old, that are in the air. So there's drones, satellites, and even balloons and kites, which have a much older history. And I'm trying to ask in the book, what is having all of this new stuff in the air and having them flown by anybody who wants to fly them do for politics? So how does new technology in the air change politics on the ground? Here at the University of San Diego, I worked with a team of graduate students to figure out just where is this even happening? How often is it happening? There weren't like five people who were experts doing five things. There are thousands of people who are not experts doing a hundred thousand different things. And we did our best to catalog them. And the striking thing to me was how often people were using this technology for good. Environmental advocacy, civil rights advocacy, and this sort of thing. For example, um, we were using drones to document large protests in Budapest several years ago. And one of the ways that we used drones in that event was to contradict the government's claim that there was nobody on the streets protesting a new government policy. We actually were able to show, along with other journalists, that there were not hundreds of people or thousands of people, but tens of thousands of people on the street. If we can actually see from the air how many people are there, we can make a more compelling claim about who's right. It's those hard facts that help us to have better informed policy conversations about what people want. There are also a lot of very creative uses of drones to get into places where drones can do things that are really important, but nobody's able to really um, get, get access to before. So for example, conservationists are using them to measure what comes out of the blowhole of, of whales. It's really hard to get closer than with a boat. Drones can go right up. What's happening inside volcanoes? Helicopters are expensive. They've got a pilot in them. We don't want to risk their lives. So drones can go right up close to volcanoes and sample them. So these are examples from conservation and from just sort of science, your earth sciences, advancing human knowledge in ways that we were really not able to do before. Policies around drone use are really up in the air. We're in a strange, long moment where governments are trying to figure out what people can and can't do. One of the things I'm concerned about, frankly, is that we come out the other end of a difficult policy conversation in a position where governments have the ability to use drones and corporations have the ability to use drones and people don't. I do think there are real concerns over safety, real concerns over privacy, but, uh, but our data has shown that these are actually not the largest usage for drones. So it's more important to actually target those sort of, let's say, bad actors and create ways of holding those people to account, new forms of accountability, rather than laws that bl blanket laws that say nobody can use the technology. I care about this not because I'm a hobbyist who flies over the beach, but because I actually want to support civil society groups who are trying to hold the powerful to account. I really want to start a larger conversation about the technologies we all use in our daily lives and the fact they have political ramifications. It's a whole host of new technology that are really putting power into the hands of people. Governments have this, corporations have this, and I'm arguing people should have a lot of this power too.